Alto. My name is Joe Ballard. I'm the Poto High School principal. In honor of Native American Heritage Month, our students have brought the culture of the Choctaw Nation into our classrooms. Due to the ongoing pandemic, we were unable to bring the guest speakers into our schools. So we decided to bring the Choctaw culture to all of our students through technology. In our first video of our series, the Poto Pirate video production team, under the supervision of Jamie Hackler, our technology instructor, and Bobby Gillum, head of the Poto JOM, and myself traveled to the old Choctaw Capitol building, which was built in 1894. These ancient Choctaw lands are also the home to a replica of a Choctaw village which depicts the culture of the Choctaws in the late 1700s and early 1800s. Our pirate video production team has put together a few short videos documenting life in the village and is narrated by Les Willingston, who works for the Choctaw Cultural Education Program. I would also like to thank Ross Green, Genevieve Tom, and Dwayne Hornbuckle for setting this opportunity up for their students to document the history of the Choctaws. Please enjoy. Yoka Key. My name is Les Williston. I'm uh, with the Choctaw Nation Cultural Services Department. We're at Tuscahoma. Tuscahoma is the capital grounds of the Choctaw Nation. Anything uh, legal that has to be signed and and uh, made legal has to be done here on these grounds at the at the at the council house. Uh, the Capitol building is a uh, is an old building. It was built in 1894. And uh, that one burned down, so they had to build a new one. The Capitol grounds is uh, where we where we came to after the Trail of Tears. At the end of the Trail of Tears is where we ended up. The territory here is uh, a couple thousand acres right here. Part of it's the Capitol ground, and part of it's the the ranch. Uh, several a couple of ranches. The village here built back in uh, about 2006. It's a replica of an ancient village, another an old way uh, our people used to live a long time ago. The domiciles or the, the huts are built uh, round, usually. There's a hut that's built with uh, wooden walls packed with clay that makes the walls solid and uh, with a thatched roof. We have a waterfall out here that brings life-giving water into the village. We've always lived by the rivers. Our family lines come down, uh, come down the female line, yeah, which means you get your clan name from your from your mother, and then your grandmother comes down the female's line. It's called a matrilineal society. The uh, the the village itself is uh, is uh, governed by a strong uh, uh, council of women who are the clan mothers. Most of the domestic issues are settled, settled through them. They made the decisions in that, that area. But uh, women were held in very high esteem, had a lot of political clout, had a lot of political power within this, within this village area. Some, somebody from another tribe coming to the territory or somewhere else came into the territory that was, uh, that was handled by the, by the war chiefs and the peace chiefs. Now, most of our villages had a stockade wall built around it wherever there was unprotected areas. And uh, if any uh, large groups of people came into the territory, they had to come in uh, pretty much single file. So, so nobody could overrun the village. That was the purpose for the, for the palisades, the, uh, for the walls around it. Before we know, we were known as Choctaw, had a, had a huge territory all through the deep south. And today there are still, uh, still many tribes through the south. Uh, Alabama's, Cachadas, Chittimachas, Tensas, Calusas, Miccosukis, all kinds of tribes down to the south who are uh, federally recognized as separate tribes nowadays, but at one time we were all one people. Before we were known as Choctaw, we were called uh, Panchifalaya, which is what we were called by uh, other tribes around the area, which means long hair. The Choctaw uh, men grew their hair long. The one main part of the village that that's, uh, you'll find in every village would be a ball field. 
Uh, ball fields for stickball. Spitball. We had several games, but uh, ball field was mainly for stickball, which is uh, a sacred ceremony in itself. It is our war medicine. It is uh, uh, how we settled a lot of disputes in the South. When you have a permanent territory, like the Choctaw did, and uh, the Creeks and the, the, uh, the Chickasaws and many of the other tribes, we had permanent territories and permanent settlements and permanent villages. And, and uh, there was, some of them were quite large. Uh, if there was a dispute upon any, 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 over anything, they'd settle it over a stickball game. That's because our warriors, instead of going to war, we'd settle it over that. Sell it over at game instead of uh, instead of going to war. With going to war, uh, you didn't want to kill everybody. Didn't want to didn't want to go to war. So sell it over at stickball game is a better way. And uh, <clears throat> that's because our warriors knew their warriors. Our people knew their warriors. Probably played together in the in the, in the, when they were kids. Visited each other's homes. Uh, so they knew each other. And uh, so instead of going to war where you have to kill everybody, you settle it, settle it at a much, at a much better. There, there would be people get killed in stickball, but not, not as many as uh, going to war. <clears throat>